in solidarity against racism. While the protests here echo a national frustration, it's also sparked conversations about how black people are treated by other minority groups. Putting her experiences to music, Manira Williams has found out firsthand what it means to be black while being in a South Asian community. There's no way you can look at me and you can know that I'm Jamaican. So Jamaican becomes a synonym for black, essentially. And then you will have people saying things like, oh, no, the Jamaicans pray upstairs. You know, people saying, oh, you're Muslim now. Don't worry, don't worry about your Jamaican past. It's bigger than you, it's bigger than me. When her music found a bigger platform online, the haters found her too. But it was one particular voice that hurt her the most. There was a particular strand of hate for black women. So first of all, the blackness you will hear, see things like, you know, um, people making comments about our lips or our noses. Other people making comments like, should be raped, you know? And I'm like, okay, so not even, it, because the thing is, you know, you could say, oh, that person, they're just backwards. You could say that person, oh, they're just back in the old days. What old days? When has it ever become permissible to rape people, right? For some, the hurt is a lot closer to home. Abdullah Shatouf was born to a Moroccan father and a Bangladeshi mum, a point he says that's constantly highlighted by the South Asian community he grew up with. Growing up, I felt when I went to like family events and things that kind of some of the olders would be like, oh look, it's the African kids kind of thing. But, you know, as a kid, I didn't understand if they were joking or not, but I felt attacked. And these attitudes didn't stop with childhood. He says they've cast a shadow on his adult life too. I feel like there's a big pressure from families, so the, your community behind you. So you personally might not mind, but just in the back of your mind, you know, this is where the passive racism comes from. So you know that your family might not say, oh, don't marry a dark-skinned girl, but you know you can't bring a dark-skinned girl home just because of the fact that everyone in your whole external, everyone's just going to be talking about it and you don't want that drama. Some blame the present day problems on the past. Red and white buildings like this one in Delhi are reminders that the British once ruled here. And with colonial occupation, the colour of your skin soon came to represent how much power you had. We naturally will um, create this sort of in-group similarity and out-group difference. So they are different, we don't want to be like them. So there's this sort of kind of natural, um, almost like a hierarchy that uh, plays out. And if white was associated with power, then black was linked to the lack of it. It's a hierarchy of skin colour that many would say is still reflected in today's society. Nithya Rajan, ITV News.